the College of Arts and Sciences, the Office of Undergraduate Studies, would like to thank y'all so much for joining us for Gamecock Teaching Day. This is actually our fifth year of hosting um, a GTD, and we're very pleased to showcase uh, several of our McCausland Innovation Fund winners, and one of which is uh, Rebecca Stern, uh, who's an associate professor in the Department of English, Language, and Literature. And today she's going to talk to us a little bit about um, what she's doing to build community in her English 280 class, Literature and Society. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rebecca. So, um, creating community in a large asynchronous class. And for starters, I'll just tell you a little bit about the class in question, which is English 280. It's literature and society, um, and it fulfills two different components of the Carolina core, both AIU, which is the aesthetic and interpretive understanding, and VSR, the values and social responsibility. Um, just in terms of the history of this class, um, I have never taught it, um, well, I have taught honor sections in person, but I have never taught a large lecture format of this class in person. I have taught it online as a smaller class um, and then as a synchronous and then hybrid synchronous asynchronous class in the spring and fall, spring 21, fall 22. Um, in fall 22, for the first time, we ran a completely asynchronous version of this class. It was eight weeks. Um, it filled up. I had 32 students in there. It kept me extremely busy. Um, but it, I used the same principles that I'll be talking about here for the full term class. And um, I am teaching it now. Um, here, I'll come back to that one, just so you know, and you probably already know of this, asynchronous online classes are extremely popular. Um, the eight week online session was fully enrolled. My current full session is fully enrolled with 150 students. And we're running this class again in the fall with another instructor um, for a 15 week session and there are 200 seats. So, you know, this has, this has been a class that students are interested in and are showing up for. And so that's been really wonderful. It is um, a somewhat provocative class, especially the way I teach it. So here's um, a list of what we've read this semester. And um, three of these are on banned book lists across the country. So they do provoke some, um, some really interesting and engaged discussion among students. I had known that already from teaching in person, but I'll get into how we adapted a bit for um, the larger class. Okay. <clears throat> so um, a couple of the things that we talk about in terms of um, asynchronous classes, and this is true for all classes, but particularly true, for asynchronous classes where you never, you never see your students' faces unless you look at the grade book and it's um, and you don't hear their voices, which is hard. So um, just in terms of the instructor presence part of the picture, I have um, at least weekly announcements, usually bi-weekly, unless I forget. <laughs> so, you know, almost every week they hear from me at least twice. Um, I also will send emails to individual students. And um, I, of course, put in my time on giving them feedback in the grading and their evaluations as well. But as you know, when you're dealing with 150 students, it's hard to give um, substantive work. And so, I mean, substantive responses. So. Um, I'm particularly interested and I'm focusing today on the question of learner to learner um, engagement because I can manage the learner to instructor um, contact through my weekly videos, through what I put into my modules, um, 
through what I send out to them, learner to content again, you know, managed through models and through assignments. But then there's the question of learner to learner and how you set that up within um, within a large class. So <clears throat> here's what I do. <laughs> Um, you start off with, you know, 150 pumpkins <laughs> and um, all of your pumpkins are, you know, it's sort of this mass of pumpkins. So if you split your pumpkins up, <laughs> you have um, six or seven per group and that those groups stay together all semester. They get um, shared group assignments. They have a group discussion board and I'll take you through how to set that up in just a moment. Um, but I do no more than six to seven um, students per group, which means that with 150 students, we had 25 groups. And so there's a lot of organization that goes into um, making all of this work. One quick way to make sure that students are engaging with one another from the start and get what you're expecting of them from um, in their group activities is to start with introductions and icebreakers. You might um, give them a, you know, a group quiz or something where they, you know, have to say, this is where I'm from, or this is what I think about um, online learning, or just give them a discussion board with some icebreakers. Um, two truths and a lie is always a nice one. I also recommend um, including a syllabus quiz for so many reasons, but one of them is that you can make sure that um, you cover expectations for groups so that they know. If you start off, I'll just start off on my homepage in Literature and Society, okay? If you scroll down under course management, you will find the little tab for users and groups. If you click on groups, okay, it will take you to this page and you can see I've already set up my groups, but I'll take you through this process. Okay, you go over to create, okay, and I would do group set and what I did was manual enroll. It's just easier for record keeping. So if I click manual enroll and group set, okay, I can call it, um, I don't know, teaching days. And I can include a description if I want. I can make the group visible to students or not. Okay, and then there are all of these tools and I get to decide what I actually want to include for them. So will I have journals? Will I have blogs? Will I have discussion boards? Um, I don't need all of the brain fuse stuff. So I actually take the time to clear out what I'm not gonna use here, just so that when they go into their group pages, it's a little bit less cluttered and they can get directly to what we are using. Okay, you'll see down at the bottom, it gives you the opportunity to decide exactly how many groups you have. So simple division, divide your total number of students by six or seven. Um, and I would recommend also creating a smart view for each group in the set because that allows you then to use the gradebook group by group, okay? And you can actually see how each individual group is doing and who's done what, okay? Um, once you go into a group, you can see here, they have a group blog, they have the discussion board, they have tasks, they have a wiki, but you know, here's their discussion board and they've had a whole number of them over the course of the semester. And you can see where you know, they're responding. Um, they have many opportunities to engage with one another. And I'll get into a little bit more about productive um, productive assignments. Okay, so um, you wanna make sure that when you give groups assignments, same with any kinds of assignments, you wanna make sure that they are meaningful so that you know, you're not just giving them busy work, 
but um, also, and this is the really important part, that they are interactive. So on discussion boards, I ask students specifically to respond to one another. That's part of their grade. Um, I also, same with the blogs, they build them together. Wikis, they're supposed to edit one another. But there are many more tools available and out there, and I hope we can talk more about this. I couldn't, I used VoiceThread once and I really liked it, except I could not figure out how to make it work for individual groups. And I ended, I would end up with 150 um, voice threads, which just won't work. So we can, I'd be really interested in hearing and talking more about tools that you found useful. Okay, so here's a sample discussion prompt. This is one of the first ones. So um, I ask them, to write a brief post. I give them a very specific assignment. I ask them um, regularly to quote from the work so that, you know, this is going to be discipline specific, obviously, but um, something that ties what their response is back to the text that I'm asking them to engage in. And then you'll see here, I ask them to post their thoughts and respond to two others by midnight. Um, and our turnaround day is Mondays. Um, another sample prompt, and I'm giving you this one because, um, because of the last um, instruction here. We had, we discovered that when we asked students to use quotes in the discussion boards, um, often the students who were posting later used the same quotes as the people who had posted earlier. So you can actually set the discussion board to require a post from the student in order for them to see other responses. So that's a little trick that we used here. Okay. Um, Management of time and labor. So when you're dealing with 25 groups, <laughs> um, there's, you know, there, just in dealing with 150 students, period, there's always the work of managing email, of man time management with regard to grading and administration. In my case, and this has been really important, um, teaching assistants. <laughs> My teaching assistants are what make the machine run. And um, they have been for me key to com creating community in these large online classes. Um, they foster community in the groups. So each teaching assistant is actually a member of the groups that I ask them to grade and to supervise. Um, and <laughs> they will need your help. Okay, um, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into supervising and um, orienting them to working within Blackboard and working within the strange parameters of asynchronous teaching. So some of the support um, that I have offered is um, we meet weekly and I'm always available to them via email and other such things, but I will frequently in our weekly meetings, take them through little Blackboard tutorials. So, you know, this is how you grade a wiki. This is um, how you can go in and use SmartView, other such things that are part of Blackboard that are not necessarily intuitive. Um, regular communication. So when I hear from their students, I'm always in touch with them and they are on the same page in terms of any kinds of um, special accommodations or arrangements that students make. Um, I also have a special resources page within Blackboard, and I can take you back into that, that has um, rubrics for them and also short tutorials on how to navigate Blackboard. So if they're grading in the middle of the night and they don't remember what I've told them, they, they have the opportunity to actually get back in there and do some work. Um, each one gets a manageable number of groups. So you have to figure out, you know, how many students can you assign to each teaching assistant? And they get, you know, that number of groups. Um, 
set really clear expectations of what you want from your teaching assistants. So how much response do you want from them? When are they supposed to um, turn in grades? How much do you want them to be in touch with students? And in terms of their own time management, um, here, let me go back here. Yeah, I have, um, I have really simple rubrics that help them to navigate grading discussion posts, grading um, assignments, grading basically anything that I give them. So um, I also regularly give them calendars with, you know, here's what's coming up and I send them reminders. Um, they also, obviously I said they have access to the Blackboard tutorials and also to CTE. Um, just to go back to um, the, the question of engagement and time management, to respond even to 35 students individually, like let's say I had a class of 35, that's seven groups, okay? What I, what I have started doing is responding to each group. Okay, so each group gets the same response for a discussion board. And then if there are individual details that I wanna paste in for, for individual students, I have the opportunity to do that, but it makes it so that I'm writing seven responses for 35 students rather than 35. And that's what I help my grad students to, to figure out how to do as well. Um, the realities of Blackboard. <laughs> Did I hear a guffaw in the background? Um, Blackboard requires a lot of time. Okay? And when I talk about posting discussion posts, basically for each group, one has to post the prompt individually Right now I've got 25 groups. I have to post it 25 times. So this semester I have discovered that there is um, a 24 seven project runway channel that I can have on in the background while I'm sitting there copying and pasting. But you know, it's, it's a pain in the butt. It does mean that I have to then go back and make sure that I in fact copied it 25 times, right? So that there are 25 um, posts. But yeah, it requires a lot of time. It also will require a fair amount of organization um, on your part, just keeping track of charts. So, um, and also there's ongoing management. So let me just show you, um, let me go back up here, um, what the grade book ends up looking like because it's a mess, it's a giant mess. It's such a mess, it won't even show it to me. Okay, so column organization, if I just go to column organization, you can see for each group, you get a column. And for each discussion board, you get a column. So you can see I've hidden these because they're in the past and it just helps to make it so that when we click into the discussion board, we're able to see a little bit more clearly, you know, what's current, but you can see this is just, you know, it's, it's rather a mess and difficult to navigate. So what I've set up and what I, what I was going to say is that I've set up columns for um, their average discussion participation, and then their average quizzes just at the, at the start of the gradebook. So they can see their assignments, their quiz average, and their discussion board average. Um, so these are really the, the main things that one needs to do is create, you know, creating discussion posts, creating wiki prompts, creating um, collaborative group work, and then, you know, managing the grade book and then keeping track of who's succeeding and who's not. Um, students really do appreciate 
hearing from you as an instructor. Um, but I've also really encouraged students to use their groups as a place to, to get um, support and to really talk about what's going on in the class and how they're doing. So 